In this video, we're going to take a look at variables that will be involved in gas law problems. So when we're dealing with gases, there's a few variables that come into play that affect the behavior of gases. And the main variables that we're going to see are uh, pressure and temperature. And so we're going to take a look at what pressure is, what temperature is, and also see different units used to measure pressure and temperature. We'll see how to convert between the different units because sometimes some of the problems will require some consistency, and so you'll have to do some unit conversions. We'll start off with pressure, and pressure by definition is simply the force applied per a certain unit of area. So pressure is force over area. Um, and so you can see here we have some gas particles in a balloon, and essentially as they are um, uh, colliding and hitting uh, the walls, of the, colliding with and hitting the walls of the balloon, they're, create, they're, they're essentially applying a force. Um, and so that's the pressure that's, that's measured or felt. Or over here we have um, a piston, um, we have, um, uh, you can push it down or leave it up, but you have gas particles hitting the walls of the container and that's creating a pressure. Um, and here we have a low pressure system because you have a lot of space for the particles to move around. But if I push this little lid or this piston down, I cram the particles into a smaller amount of space, and so my meter here goes up, and so the particles are basically hitting the walls with um, greater force in that area. Um, and so we have a higher pressure system over here. And so that's what pressure is, basically particles hitting against the, uh, colliding with the, uh, the walls of a container. Um, and so you can also look at the atmospheric pressure, and so you might have heard about that before, the pressure um, in the atmosphere, and it's the pressure exerted by air on all objects. So um, here we are on Earth, and uh, the air is all around us, and the air, which is a gas, exerts pressure on all objects around it. So we have essentially um, a whole bunch of atmosphere uh, uh, applying pressure to us here um, on Earth, especially if you're standing on the surface of the Earth. Um, and typically when we measure uh, pressure, one of the main units that we use is the Pascal, PA. Um, but when we measure atmospheric pressure, you can use the kilopascal. There are other units as well. Um, but uh, these are some of the main units that we've been using, the Pascal and the kilopascal. Um, and they're related very much like uh, grams and kilograms. So for example, if I have um, a thousand kilopascal, if I have a thousand Pascals, it's one kilopascal. Now, one thing to understand, and you might already know this, is as you go up in altitude, as you go up higher up, um, you have less air pressure. And that's because the density of the gases higher up is lower. So there's um, a lower density higher up, but as you're down, the density is higher. So you have a higher uh, atmospheric pressure um, as you're at lower altitudes. So you can see that over here. Here we have um, high altitudes over here and low altitudes over here. Higher up, you'll see there's still gas particles there, but they're spread out more. So you have a lower density. And that's why the pressure of the gases at higher altitudes is lower than the pressure of the gases at lower altitudes. You have a higher density um, at the lower altitudes. So more gas particles at lower altitudes means higher pressure. And then up here, fewer gas particles or lower density of gas particles in the upper atmosphere means a lower pressure system. So um, as we mentioned, pressure is the force exerted um, by air on objects around it, especially atmospheric pressure, but every gas can exert a pressure. Um, to measure pressure, we can use what's called a barometer. Um, and so the way it kind of works is, and this is a, an older barometer, but it's still, it's the same idea. Um, we fill up this tube over here with uh, mercury. So we have some mercury um, in this tube and in this little container. And um, what happens is the uh, atmosphere is going to push the mercury, uh, pr put a force on this mercury. And then as you push down the mercury, it causes the mercury in the tube to rise up. And then whatever level it goes to, that's the um, level of pressure that you can read. And so typically when you use um, this tool here to measure um, the pressure, we use another, uh, another unit called millimeters of mercury because, well, there's mercury in here. So this is a barometer that uses mercury, um, the atmospheric pressure, the gases push on the mercury, which causes the liquid level of mercury over here to rise. Um, and then that, that value that we measure there, that's our, uh, our air pressure. And that's in millimeters of mercury. It's just a different unit. You can convert between millimeters of mercury to pascals or kilopascals. And we'll see other units of pressure that exist um, as well. So these are the main units of pressure that we'll be studying in uh, unit five for gas laws. We have the atmosphere, ATM, millimeters of mercury, 
tor, pascals, kilopascals, bar, and pounds per square inch, or PSI. And so you can convert between the different units by using this conversion bar over here. You don't have to memorize these values. They'll be provided to you in the data tables that we use for chemistry. So please make sure you know where to get the data tables in our calendar, and you can use that when you're doing the conversions. So we'll do some sample problems together for unit conversions. I've also included an additional video here where you can practice doing unit conversions and check your work to make sure you do understand the concepts very well. So um, this over here is just a table that summarizes the different units of pressure that, uh, that we use um, and where you would use them. So for example, for the ATM, the um, standard atmosphere, you might use that in pneumatic tools, like if you're using a jackhammer and gas compressors. Um, for millimeters of mercury and uh, for millimeters of mercury, um, when you're measuring your blood pressure with a blood pressure meter or cuff, um, that's, that's where you'd use millimeters of mercury. Tor, we use it in vacuum pumps, Pascal and pressure sensors and pipelines. Um, and then if you want a, a bigger unit, like the kilopascal, you might use inflation gauges um, in heating and ventilation and, and AC systems. You also have the bar and the bar is used in pressure um, sensors and scuba gear. So if you're a scuba diver, you might've seen that already. Um, steam, tra steam traps that are used to remove condensed water from pipes um, that carry steam. Um, you can also have the millibar, which is essentially a relationship between the bar and the, uh, with the bar. Uh, and you use that in barometers now. Um, and then pounds per square inch will be used in, um, if you've ever filled tires for uh, bikes or cars, for example, um, in tire inflation gauges and also hydraulic pumps. So the different units um, all apply to pressure, but they might be used in different instruments. They might just be better, um, uh, they have better applications in different instruments. So it would be good to know what these different units are, um, to know that they're units of pressure, and to maybe to know an example of where they might be used in. So before we go into temperature, let's go ahead and do some conversion problems using our conversion bar uh, to convert from one unit of pressure to another. And so we'll do that by going to our handout that we have over here. And let's see what we remember for pressure. So we saw that the pressure is the uh, force per, uh, per area, per surface area. So it's basically particles hitting against the side of container walls that creates that, that provides a force. And the units of pressure are often uh, provided in pascals. Um, but they can also be kilopascals. Um, and we also saw atmospheric pressure, which was um, essentially the pressure exerted by air on all objects. Um, and what we saw is that as you go up in altitude, um, you have a lower density of gases. So there's less air pressure as you go up. And you might have experienced that, you know, if you've ever been in a plane or just driven up to a higher altitude, your ears start to pop. And that's because you have less pressure acting on your body. Um, and then uh, we can measure pressure using a tool called a barometer. And so we saw how that works. Essentially, we have, um, in this case, it's a barometer using mercury. Um, and so the air is going to push down the mercury, cause the mercury level to rise. And wherever it sort of lands, we can read that as millimeters of mercury. That's if we're using one of these older barometers over here. Um, in this image, we can see uh, two different pressure systems, a low pressure system and a high pressure system. Um, if you have a large volume of space where the particles are kind of free to roam, they still hit the wall, but they won't hit the wall with as much force. So it's a lower pressure. Whereas if you uh, move this piston down and cram them into a smaller volume of space, now they're hitting the walls with uh, greater force. And so you have and you have more particles kind of uh, cramming in um, in that small in that small space there. So you have um, you have a, a higher pressure system. It's not that you have more particles overall, you still have the same amount of particles from here to here. It's just that they're crammed in a smaller space and they're hitting the side, sides of the container with greater force. Um, so what we saw was that you can have uh, different units of pressure and the different units uh, will, will depend depending on, um, will vary depending on what tool you're using. But what's important is that you know how to convert from one unit to another. So uh, we'll do a few practice problems together. Uh, I'll do the, the individual ones here first. Let's do this example over here. Convert 3.58 ATM to kilopascals. And so what we do is we, we want to go from ATM over here to KPA. Uh, and so to do that, we're going to do our 3.58 ATM. And we're going to multiply it by a ratio in our conversion bar. We want to go to KPA 
from ATM. So we're going to have a ratio. We have one ATM for every 101.325 KPA. We want to write the ratio in a way that allows us to cancel the ATM and keep the KPA. So in other words, KPA will be on top. So 101.325 KPA over ATM at the bottom. That allows us to cancel out the ATM and to stick with our units of KPA. And so when we do that, we get 3.58 times 101.325. And that gives us 362.7435 KPA. Uh, we want to keep three sig figs. So that's approximately up to here. We round up there, 363 KPA. So we just looked at our conversion bar, which you will have access to in your data tables, um, made a ratio, multiplied the item we want to convert by that ratio written in the proper way with the uh, unit we want to cancel in the uh, denominator. So at the bottom, so it could cancel out. So we'll try the last few questions there. Um, I recommend you pause the video, try it yourself, and then unpause the check every time you're done a question. So here we want to go from millimeters of mercury to KPA. So I'm going to write out my millimeters of mercury over here, 770 mmHg. I'm going to multiply it by a conversion factor between millimeters of mercury and KPA, which is over here. So we're no longer dealing with ADM. Um, and I need to put millimeters of mercury at the bottom. So in my bar, it's 760 millimeters of Hg and um, 101.325 KPA. And that's because I want to cancel out the millimeters of mercury and keep KPA. So I have 101.325 times 770. And that gives me, I'm not done yet. I forgot to divide by 760. Don't forget that. So I was I was looking at the number and I thought, that's really big. That doesn't make sense. So 770 times 101.35 divided by 760. Don't forget to do that. So divide by 760. And we get 102.658.2237 KPA. Uh, and if we want to keep that to the proper number of sig figs, so we had two sig figs. Um, if we put 102, that'd be three sig figs. Uh, so we have no choice but to write this in scientific notation to keep it as two sig figs. So this essentially rounds down to 100. Um, and if you want to round it down to 100, that will be one sig fig. If you round it down to 100 point, that's three sig figs. So the only way to really write it properly with the right number of sig figs is to write 1.0 times 10 to the power of two KPA. So in scientific notation. Now, if this was a question with several steps, you would not round until the very end. Just keep that in mind. The only reason we're rounding here is to maintain consistent significant figures since we have only one step in this problem. Let's try our next question. Convert 20.5 PSI to ATM. So here we have 20.5 PSI. We're going to multiply it by a conversion factor used, uh, uh, made with the conversion bar. So... PSI is over here, ATM is over here. We want PSI at the bottom, so 14.7 PSI, and ATM at the top because we want to cancel out the PSI and keep the ATM. And so we're gonna get 20.5 divided by 14.7. And that gives us 1.39455723 ATM. So the proper number of sig figs, we want to keep three sig figs. So about 1.39 ATM. And make sure you put those units when you're done with your final answer. Let's try the other problem over here. Convert 470 tors to PA. So we want to go from tors to PA. So let's go ahead and write out what we're converting first. So we have 470 tors. We're going to multiply by a conversion factor that includes PA and tors. 
So Tours is 760, PA is 101,325. So we have 760 Tours at the bottom and then 101,325 PA at the top. That's because we want to cancel out the Tours and keep the PA. And so we get 470 times 101,325 divided by 760 and we get 62,661.51316 PA or we need to have this the proper number of sig figs. So this is um, two sig figs here. So you want to keep up to here essentially. And so we'd have to round that up. So it'd be 63,000 um, Pascals, or you could write it as a scientific notation, 6.3 times 10 to the power of four. If you move the decimal over one, two, three, four, to the left, 10 to the power of four um, Pascals. So either way, it's both two significant digits there, and we have our proper units. So we've just done a bunch of conversions for pressure. Um, we'll do uh, another example here. Um, let's do this last one over here. Again, pause the video, try them yourself, and then check your work. So we want to convert the 2.5 ATM into each of these. So we'll just do one at a time. First, we'll do the um, 2.5 ATM to TORS, so times uh, we'll put ATM at the bottom, one ATM, and then 760 TORs on top. Cancel out ATMs, and so you get 2.5 times 760, and you get 1,900 TORs, and that's two sig figs, so we're good. Um, question two, 2.5 ATM to millimeters of mercury, so 2.5 ATM multiplied by, we want to get rid of our ATM, so one ATM at the bottom, and millimeters of mercury, it's also 760. M, M, H, G, cancel out ATM, and you'll get the same answer, but in millimeters of mercury, 1900, M, M, H, G. And then lastly, we want to convert the uh, 2.5 ATM to, um, the KPA. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's our number three here. 2.5 ATM multiplied by our conversion factor. So one ATM at the bottom. And in KPAs, we have uh, 101.325. KPA at top, cancel out ATM. And so we have 2.5 times 101.325 divided by one. And so we get 253.3125 and that's KPA. But we wanna make sure we have the same number of sig figs, so two sig figs, so we can round down to 250. 250 KPA. And so in this video, we saw what pressure is, how it's measured, that there's different units and different units are um, used in different tools and for different applications. Uh, and we also saw how to convert from one unit of pressure to another because you'll be doing that in some of your uh, formulas for uh, gases with moles and, and other practice problems. In the next video, we're going to take a look at another variable that um, we'll see with gases and effects to behavior. And that variable is going to be the temperature variable.